education in India has often been the target of criticism. But have we ever wondered why? If we look into the different areas of criticisms, we find that the method of teaching itself is one of them. It is because for a long time we have been following lecture in the form of a classical monologue. This has been the most commonly used method of teaching. We did not seriously examine its merits and demerits. Lecture method is very common due to easiness with which it can be delivered to a large number of students. However, it is ineffective to develop in the students many attributes such as analytical and critical faculties, problem solving ability, effective attributes, and ability to generate knowledge. Even if lecture is criticized for its drawbacks, it has potential which can be exploited for better teaching. It should be the concern of every teacher at the higher education level to know how a lecture can be made effective. Effectiveness of a lecture largely depends on the qualities of the person who delivers it. Perhaps not. These qualities can very much be acquired through practice. A few skills associated with lecture are discussed in this program. These skills can generally be categorized as skills associated with planning and preparation of the lecture and delivery of the lecture. Let us now examine these categories in detail. Planning always precedes the delivery of a lecture. But what does the planning of a lecture involve? Let us see what this teacher does at the planning stage before going to the class. He decides the amount of content to be transmitted in a period and the way it will be treated. He mentally goes through all the learning experiences that the students would go through. Accordingly, he structures the lecture in the form of a flow chart or content map. He prepares cards which can be used as a reference or a prompter while delivering the lecture. Moreover, he is aware of the various communication aids to be used. He selects slides and other material. He may also prepare transparencies in case the overhead projector is to be used. After planning comes the delivery of the lecture. It comprises three parts. These are introduction, presentation, and closing up. Introducing the topic is the first job in the delivery of a lecture. This can be done in several ways. Let us see how this teacher introduces the topic. 
and many students come to these colleges after their plus two. He asks a few yes. questions or poses a problem. From the response to these, to he leads to the main theme of the lecture. Anybody, please, why do they come to these colleges? Thus, out of the answers, the introduction is built up. Interesting that some people come because they have nothing else to do, so let me go to the colleges. Yes? Okay, that is interesting. What about you? You are telling something. To be a graduate. Basic requirement uh, should be a graduate. To learn something. Okay, I, I, I do agree to all the answers. Some people come for taking degrees. Some people would like to spend some time happily. There are a lot of things to do in colleges. Some people uh, uh, would uh, basically come for learning. But all these people do learn something. Whether it is to take degrees, to spend some time, even if it is most of the time you would like to spend outside the, in the campus, outside the classrooms, you learn certain things. Let us now see another example. Well, this teacher I relates the new topic the, the to the topic already taught. And in biotechnology, which is the ever-growing field of interest, we have discussed that there are a large number of areas which are covered under this aspect. And to name a few today, and just to remind, we have said that genetic engineering is one of the aspects, and the tissue culture is another aspect which is included in biotechnology. And this process of tissue culture is the process which we will be discussing in detail today. Now this simply means that we can take any part of the plant tissue and then grow it in artificial medium. Now I have drawn a diagram for you. Apart from these, introduction of the topic can also be done through an experiment chart, slides, or models. Once the introduction phase is over, the teacher enters into the presentation phase. This is the most important phase of a lecture where the real teaching learning process occurs. It requires a number of skills on the part of a teacher. And which is Let us see these skills in detail. Particularly for the horticultural plants is the shoot tip culture. So that that's the area which we will be talking about. Shoot tip culture is very important in order to obtain plants which are absolutely bacteria free. It is a skill of walking. It is a skill. Knowledge is one aspect of course. Then the second is the skill of doing things is another. Okay, so there can be different types of things which come under or which, which happens due to learning. Knowledge we acquire, somebody talked about application of knowledge in situations. You talked about skills which we acquire uh, uh, through learning. All these we acquire. How this happens? Okay, all the all these things come out of the process of learning. But what is that process? First comes the skill of explaining. First step that involves in this micropropagation system is that we have a plant and then we uh, cut out the teacher must present his ideas in a simple, lucid, and coherent manner. Is known as the shoot tip culture or the shoot tip is has to be just about one to two microns in height. It's almost a very small portion of the growing apex and therefore once this is removed, the apex is transferred to a solid etherized medium which includes all the nutrients and then we allow this 
particular shoot tip to grow into a normal healthy plant. Now when this plant has been obtained, we term this plant as the stock plant. And from this stock plant, he must divide the logical links between sentences. Thereby, we should be able to get this stock plant, which is totally bacteria free, because this has been produced from a shoot tip, which was not infected with the bacterium, because the bacteria remain much below and beyond the tip of the shoot. And therefore, when we take this terminal portion, we are leaving behind the bacteria in the major part of the plant. And therefore, from the shoot tip, we obtain a plant with all the leaves and shoots uh, which are absolutely pathogen free. Another important requirement is to provide meaningful pauses so that the ideas can be registered by the students. And then from there, we have these X plants, what we may call them as the X plants, and then these X plants are grown as a second generation into another artificial medium. So that after the X plant has been grown, we find that in Vivarias, uh, the upper surface gives rise to a large number of shoot buds. That Thus, the skill of explaining requires that a teacher should be lucid and coherent with logical links between sentences and meaningful pauses. Let us now turn to the skill of illustrating. This skill involves citing examples. This teacher is illustrating the concept of systems through the examples of the human body and the car. The human body has different organs. There is the brain, the lungs are there, the liver, the kidneys, the stomach, the intestines, etc. All these different organs function in an integrated manner to help the functioning of the human body. So one can say that human body is a system. This is one type of a system. We may take another type of a system and then see whether these characteristics are there in that also. For example, a car, a car engine, it also has different uh, parts. It has the carburetor, it has the battery, it has the radiator, etc. And if something happens with one of these, let us say that the radiator doesn't have water, then naturally it will affect the uh, functioning of the system. And that is the case with the human body also. We know very well that if the, heart, the heart stops functioning, then naturally the, uh, the system will stop functioning. And if something wrong with the, uh, the muscles, then there will be pain in the human body. So it affects the functioning of the human body. Both these are systems. Another important skill needed by the teacher is that of questioning. Most of us think that questioning only means evaluating student performance. This is not true. Questioning can be a very powerful method of collective inquiry and discussion. Let us see how this but teacher know, uses the skill of questioning. For example. I would like to learn he uses tentative I would like to read a book and invites and then, the uh, students to read. react to them. I am there and what else is there? So the book is the stimuli and the reader is the object. The book is there. There is something which is outside me which is there, which is in the environment. So in the case of reading and learning from that or acquiring knowledge, the book is there outside me. What about uh, driving a car? The car is there, where certain, some machine is there. I have to use that and then learn how to drive a car. What about swimming? Swimming pool is the source of stimuli to the individual who is learning. The swimming pool is there, the water is there. And I have to be in the water to 
learn swimming. So you, what do you understand from this particular thing? On one hand, you have the individual who has the desire to learn, who wants to learn. And on the other hand, what do you have? Practice. Practice comes, but one is the one one item involved in the in the learning process is the individual who learns, who wants to learn. And the other is what? There is, there is something outside the individual. Yes, you are right. There is something outside the individual with which what, what does the individual do? What does the individual do with that? Apply the knowledge on that. If the book is remaining there and I am standing this side, looking this side, I am not going to learn that uh, book. So what am I doing with the uh, interaction? You have to interact with, interact with that object to learn. You have to interact with the object to learn. So what, how the process of learning happens? Whether it is reading a book or so, driving a car or learning to swim, how does it happen? There is an individual who, who learns, who wants to learn and then what? We have different objects which are in the environment and the individual interacts with that with that object and in that process of interaction he learns. Okay. Now let me ask you a question. How did you learn about learning? Now, now you have an idea about learning. Isn't it? You learned about learning, you can say. Am I right? Something you did not know about learning. Now you have an idea, okay, this is learning. How did you learn about that? By interacting with another individual, by another individual. So the learning can take place not only with interacting with inanimate uh, objects, but also with individuals. And all these different types of learning... It is very important that the teacher should always be patient with the students. Also, he or she must ensure that the students are not bored by the lecture. Delivering a lecture is not a mechanical job. It is as interesting and creative as any art. Through stimulus variation, one can break the monotony of the lecture. Stimulus variation involves a number of interesting behaviors. Let us see some of them. Yes? Okay. That is interesting. What about you? You are telling something. Oh, just to be a graduate. To be a graduate? Basic requirement. Basic requirement uh, should be a graduate. To learn something. To learn something. Okay, I, I, I do agree to all the answers. Some people come for taking degrees. Some people would like to spend some time happily. There are a lot of things to do in colleges. Some people uh, uh, would uh, basically come for learning. But all these people do learn something. Whether it is to take degrees, to spend some time, even if it is most of the time you would like to spend outside the, in the campus, outside the classrooms, you learn certain things. So learning is something that goes on from day one in a college to the time you go out of the college. Or it is something which if you want to extend it further, it, it is something which goes on from the day one is born to the day one dies. Educational institutions, of course, are primarily responsible for providing these learning experiences to the students. So, we know that learning goes on in the colleges, learning goes on outside the, in the classroom, learning goes on in the marketplace, learning goes on uh, in the railway station, etc. What do we mean by learning? We all use the word, okay, I learned this, I learned that, I learned uh, music, I learned this song, etc. What do we mean by that? We have some knowledge about the particular thing. It's the experience. Acquire knowledge which you can use. Acquire knowledge, experience. You acquire knowledge. We learn, okay, knowledge has been learned. So knowledge is something we get through learning. Is that only the one we get through learning? Anything else? Satisfaction. Yes? We get satisfaction after learning. We get satisfaction after learning. Okay, that is one aspect. But that is not what we really 
aim for learning. Basically, you will be aiming for acquiring knowledge, as somebody puts it. What else? Thus, stimulus variation includes such behavior as meaningful gestures, meaningful movements, modulation of voice, facial expressions, and eye contact. One can also provide stimulus variation through proper use of teaching aids like models and charts. Let us take an example first and see about one type of a system. This is the model of the human body. You know very well there are different uh, components in this um, body like there, there are different organs. We have the stomach here, we have the liver, we have the brain and we may say that there are different subsystems for this human body. Now this simply means that we can take the blackboard can also be used by the teacher to break the monotony of the lecture. Now I have drawn a diagram for you where you can see that uh, diagrammatically we have all parts of the plants which are present. We have the shoot tip, the branch, the leaf, the main root, the secondary rootlet and the root tip. Now I might let you know that any part which has been labeled can be utilized for tissue culture purposes. When the presentation of the lecture is over, the teacher enters the closing phase. Here the teacher recapitulates and summarizes what got deliberated so now, in the class. Let me summarize what we have really learned today. Now what we learned was that in some aspects of tissue culture, we specifically are using the stem tip. And the stem tip we do simply because we want to have the plants which are bacteria free. The second step is that from this tip we have grown a stock plant. And from this stock plant, we subsequently used any part of the stock plant on another medium so that we could obtain from its large number of plantlets. These plantlets then under aseptic conditions were separated and when they have grown to a considerable height and let us say about two to three inches, then these plants are now ready for transfer into the field. And these plants, as I said, would have all the desirable characters which are needed for a good horticultural variety. And you had also seen that when we grow the X plant, which is a leaf tissue, one centimeter square, from the upper surface of the leaf, it is the epidermis, the cells of which divide repeatedly to give rise to these plantlets. And therefore, from the surface, we get plantlets numbering 200, 250, which are transfers uh, to the field, and then they can be sold in the market. And these have all the characters which the horticulturists desire. We have just seen the importance of recapitulation. Let us summarize what we have learned from this program. We have seen a lecture can be a very powerful method of instruction, but lecture as it is commonly used in institutions of higher learning does not facilitate effective learning to the extent needed. In order to make lecture a powerful and effective method of instruction, the teachers and institutions of higher learning should imbibe the skills associated with lecture. Skills associated with a lecture mainly pertain to skills of planning and skills of delivery. Skills of delivery again include the skills of introduction, skills of presentation, and skills of consolidating or closing up. All these major skills comprise a number of specific skills some of which we saw in this program. To conclude, we may say effectiveness of lecture depends largely on proper presentation and integration of various skills associated with it.